put the service in God's hands. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we once again like to thank you, Lord, for this opportunity of breath of life, Lord Jesus. We, we thank you for your mercy, your grace, Lord. We, we like to come here and report to service, Lord Jesus, service unto you, Lord. Receive our joyful noises, Lord Jesus, of praise and worship, Lord. We ask that you bless all those that are watching, Lord, and bless all those that are here and, and participating in, in the worship service. And anoint our ears and our hearts to receive from you our, our portion of bread of life, Lord Jesus. We ask that you... We place the musicians in your hands and the minister, Lord, and, and each and every one that is here, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask all things. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The lily of the valley. Amen. I found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. I've found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's a fairest of ten thousand to my soul. The lily.
our ears anointed, Lord, our mind on you, Lord, attending to your words, Lord Jesus. Lord, we set our minds on you, Lord. We ask that you bless uh, those, the cheerful givers, Lord, and um, bless your, your tithing, Lord. We ask that you touch everyone, Lord Jesus, that is watching, Lord, and help them in their need. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Are you washed in the blood? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace? This
Father, we are so thankful to be here this morning, Lord, to hear your word. Well, truly, Lord, we ask you to open up our eyes. You do our opening up our eyes little by little to more and more of what you have for us, and I thank you for that. I was thinking about that this morning, Lord, last night. Just be a friend. Be our friend. Be our friend, Lord Jesus. If we could just have that, uh, attain that in this life, what more do we want? Nothing else, Lord. So open our eyes to the Word this morning. We ask you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like to uh, start our, our message this morning with uh, Zechariah 3 9. I'd like to read it from the Bible at least. It's 11, I'm sorry, it's 10. It's 10, it's 10 22. We're scheduled only for 50 minutes, but today I may take an hour. And if I comment, it's going to take a lot longer. But uh, so I just want to be reading. And uh, uh, I, I want to be reading this morning, uh, most of the time. And uh, I, I, what, I'll trust the Lord to give me the right distance here for the mouth uh, on the microphone, not to be too loud. I was thinking about this morning. I think they have, some churches have readers, is that right? They just read. And that's what I, I'm, that's my role this morning, just to read. Get you to get your in, peak, the QV. Yeah, I can repeat, repeat your interest and in searching more. And Brother Bram, Brother Bram's telling us to, Jesus said, search the scriptures. Brother Alex has talked to us about limited message proficiency. Uh, yeah. We can not be pro li limited in that proficiency is to, it's in your hands. Uh, yeah. You just have to study and uh, retain what we hear. We're going to be reading Zechariah 3, 9, and then go to 4, 4, 10. It's right across the page for some of you. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua upon one stone. How many? One stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the, engra the engraving thereof, saying, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. Amen. Now let's go to 4.10. For who has despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel Amen. with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which Amen. run to was run to and fro through the whole land. And God bless you, we'll be seated. I didn't have that on there. I'll read it again from the screen. For those for who have despised the day of small things, for they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth. For those of you that if we don't read them all, there's a lot of scriptures talking about seven, seven eyes, seven spirits, seven eyes of the seven spirits, and the combination of it, of, as the professor was saying, and a combination thereof. Uh, but there's a combination of, of that. And uh, so I, I think everybody has one. Uh, Brother Alex, I think. Uh, yeah, I'll have one. Uh, once you hand this to Zoe, I, I didn't know if I was. Uh, my large one didn't print out. I didn't have time to print out the large one. Did you give it to me? Oh, did you have it to her or you lost it? Okay. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'm going to be emailing you those the 20 rolls anyway. This is our fifth time, number five, on on the rolls of Brother Branham. Amen. And because we doubled up before... And we're going to double up again. This is going to be number seven. We will have covered seven of the 20 that I have found. Some of you may find others. 
more roles, and there are more roles. I just we just don't have time to do a lot, a lot of them. But most of them so far have covered the thing about being Brother Brandon being our leader in the sixth dimension. Wow. Uh, he's here. Uh, he presents the bride to the Lord Jesus Christ at the rapture. He's the MC. We've talked about seven of seven of them. Amen. Today will be the seventh one. So I want to get to the title right away. These are roles number six and thirteen of Brother Bannon. He's the seventh church age messenger. A lot of people in the message don't really know what that means. Wow. That means we have to go to the seven church ages. That's what I've purposed. In January and February is to go through the seven church ages for a personal study again. Mm -hmm. uh, Brother Joseph Brandon just went through that with uh, everybody that's listening to uh, wow. that. Amen. Um, and then I want to go back to the seals again now that I have a little bit more understanding of, of what I didn't know before. And I take it to heart what Brother Bram said way in the simplicity, the message on simplicity. He says, Weigh every word. So that's really good for us to be able to do. Today, we're taking the seventh church's messenger and the seventh step. In the pyramid, I wanted to get a little picture of the pyramid and show you what it is, but you can all understand. There's seven steps, seven virtues, and so forth in the pyramid. And when you get to the seventh, right when he's going, the, the, the king is coming, you have somebody that introduces you to the king. You don't just go up there, say, I'm the queen. No, so, uh, so anyway, uh, there's somebody that introduces you. Uh, we talked about that. No, we haven't yet. Yes, we did. Uh, uh, Eliezer, I think we talked about Eliezer already, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, one of the ones that it really excites me to get study, uh, get to it, is Zerubbabel. Yeah. We're just touching on the surface today. Uh, so that's a title, okay? The primary scriptures for for the rules number six and thirteen, you search it out. All Zechariah, Haggai, Zechariah, um, Revelations, one, three, four, five, ten, eleven, twelve, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. All deal with with uh, Elijah, seventh church's messenger. We know we always say just Malachi 4, 5, Revelation 10, 7, Luke 17, 30. That's just a, just, just, just really just an introduction. And so we, that's the scriptures, okay? Now, this is a clarification. I'd like for you, all of you to read it so they can get recorded on, 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 on the video or whatever we're, they're recording on. So that everybody around the world and understand what, we're, what we don't believe, Brother Matt is. It's not Jesus Christ. No, it's bad. <laughs> so let's read this with me. I'm going to read clarification and we'll all pick it up at, at our prophet. Ready? Clarification. Our prophet never was, is not, and will never be the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the seventh church age messenger. Thank you. Amen. Revelation 1 4, John wrote the following. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace un be unto you and peace from him which is, I love that, which was and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Where are they? Before his throne. <laughs> Three, one. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis, right, these things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and are dead. You could be living it up, whoopee! You know, like New Year's Eve, they're going to be living it up, but they're dead, just spiritually dead. They're going to go to hell. In other words, because they're rejecting God. So it's just simple as that. To reject God, reject grace, re re reject grace, forgiveness, what, what's left for you? Judgment. Judgment. Nothing but judgment. Just that's all it is, okay? And um, I know that thou hast a name, that thou livest. Are dead. And out of the throne, this I love this order. This this is anybody that would ever want to study the seven thunders, just if they would just start to study, look at the sequence, the scriptural sequence, and out of the throne proceeds what? Lightning. Then what? Thunder. Then what? Voices. Okay. 
uh, and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunders and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. Amen. Which are the seven spirits of God. That's what you got to get lit off of. Right in the corner where you are. Look at Brazil. This beautiful message. Now, because I said, just quoting the prophet, just. You know, you're out there in the elements. You're depending on whatever Satan throws at you, really. Who controls the air? Who's the prince of the power of the air? Satan. Satan. Who sends the tornadoes? Satan. Satan, with God's permission. Yes. All these things that you do bad out there. You're, 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 you're a victim. You're out there. You're going to get. You're gonna get all this stuff thrown at you by Satan. But when you come into the sanctuary, you come into the holy place, now you have light going all the time. Until the light carbons up, then you got to get the priest up there to, to cut it. To, it's, it's artificial light still. It's the candle burning. But when you come into the holy of holies, even if the, the, the secret is to stay there, I come out again, go through the whole cycle. You, you taught that, and commenting. Pray for me. Okay. Now, the lightning is the visible part of the lightning bolt. The thunder is the audible part of the lightning. And then the voice is what it says. When God says he thunders, he says, voice thunders. Mm -hmm. And then what did he say? Oh, it was just a thunder. They said, John 12, she just says, well, it just, it was a thunder. It just, what did he say? Jesus heard it say, I have glorified it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll glorify it again. Yeah. A sworn affidavit to the church. Yeah, that's pretty good stuff. Do you understand what's being said? By Brother Ben, not by me. Okay. Revelation 5, 6. And I beheld the low in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, to the lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns, <laughs> power, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. Revelation 3, 14 to 22, read it at home. Here we only have time for three verses. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, whose church is it? In the church of Ephesus, or in Ephesus, it's the church of Smyrna. In the church in or of Smyrna, Pergamos. It's the church in or of Thyatira. It's the church in or of Sardis. It's the church in or of Philadelphia. But when you get to Laodicea, whose church is it? It's their church. It ain't, your, it ain't Jesus Christ's church no more. I don't care if they have in front of us the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. I don't care what baloney they have out there in it. It's not Jesus Christ's church. Man. Forgive me for yelling. I... And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write these things, saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. I'm talking to myself. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. There's only two things that God, that, that Jesus Christ has, has said, has spit out of his mouth, or will spit out of his mouth, and then what is that? Vinegar. Wine. Wine. Vin aigre in French. Vino aigre in Spanish. It's bitter wine. It's what vinegar is. Yes. Gets top, doesn't get capped off. Stays uh, subject to the elements and turns from wine. It is wine. It was wine at one time. What's wrong with yours? Lord, help me. It was wine at one time. Amen. It turned vinegar. Bitter. Yes. Wow. Smyrna. Wow. Yes. Forgive me. Lord, what's wrong with me today? I will spew you out of my mouth. So morning, get hot or get cold. Go back. Go back to denomination. Will you pray for me? Or get hot. Get into that fire. Get in, get in there. Or get out. Don't stay lukewarm. 
But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, he shall begin to sound. The mystery of God should be finished as he had declared to his servants, the prophets. Talking about the seventh angel now. Who is he? Brother Branham. I believe that the seventh angel of Revelation is a quote of him. It's not him speaking about himself. I believe that the seventh angel of Revelation 10 is the seventh church age messenger of Revelation 3.14. Remember, now let me read, look, where I can read. Now this was the seventh angel. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, seventh verse, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he had declared unto his service of prophets. Another quote. From the, is this a sign of the answer? Notice, you know, now you notice this wasn't an angel. And it's the angel of the seventh church age. Because it says here, it is the seventh angel of the seventh church age. Found that if you want to see who the where the angel is, Revelation 3.14, it's the angel to the Deity Saiyan Church. Elijah is the seventh church messenger, or church age messenger, the seventh angel. And then I had to abbreviate because it's a long quote, but I just took out the little parts where Brother Van talks about the messengers. St. Paul, Irenaeus of St. Columba, Luther, Wesley, and now we're looking for a mediocre no. messenger. No. A Mickey Mouse messenger. No. No. For a great messenger in the last day, which will be the second time coming of Elijah. It's great. Abraham's covenant confirmed. God has promised. Be careful. God has promised Malachi 4 for this day. Now, he, now notice. He's going to say be careful. He's going to say, well, I, I used to think I was a pretty sharp guy. When I first came to the message, I thought I was, you know. Remember that? I need to say this to relax. Remember the thing about Mark Twain saying, when I was five yeah. years old, I thought my dad was the greatest ever. You know? When he was 10 years old, I said, I knew he was the greatest guy ever. When I turned 12, I started having my doubts. When I got, when I turned 15, I knew my dad didn't know nothing. Then when I turned 21, I was amazed how much he had learned in six years. From 50 to 21, six years, he, he, he had learned, wow, he knows all these encyclopedias and dictionaries and languages and, you know. <laughs> so I would hear brothers, tremendous brothers in the message. I'm not going to mention their name. I'm not going to throw them under the bus. They're at Mesa, parking lot, Mesa Church. Brother Garcia, did Malachi 4 already come? Or are we still waiting for it? <laughs> Because they heard these quotes like this. They heard stuff like this. And they believed every word. We haven't had it yet. This is this is spoken words which you'll see. It hasn't fulfilled yet. Well, this, you know, we have a tendency to put a period, not a comma. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. When did that in a fold, in a shadow, take place? April. Yeah, I will send you, like, what did I say? Let's be spoken. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great dreadful, dreadful day of the Lord. When did that fulfill here in this 20th century just when recently? Was born. When was the first time we, that was a fold of it was for us, this Gentile people. When was that re revealed? A fold. I see it with a comma. April the 6th. 1909. Yes. Why? Was he Elijah? Will he? Was he? Is he? Or will he be the Elijah of Malachi 4? Yes. So a prophet is made, right? They, they, they elect, have an election, right, Brother Alex? They get all the bishops and, no. and they say, who are we going to vote? There's Elijah. He's born. He's born a prophet. So he was born Malachi 4. When did that Malachi 4 become real to Sister Branham? Yeah, I mean, I said, well, oh, Lord, I love Bill, and, but just, could you just show me, show me, please? Yes. <laughs> when I marry you or not, wow. I've never done this before, but it was you who did for me. And there is Malachi. Uh, behold, I sent you a light. So when did the light of Malachi become real to her? Malachi 4. 
When did it become real to Sister Steffi? She saw one, that tree. She's walking up a little hill and she says, the man with white hair flowing beard. And somebody says, to her, that's the immortal Elijah. She walks up and says, hi, Sister Steffi. Hmm. What can I do for you? And it was your voice, Brother Brown. Hmm. When, did, when, did he, when did she get her Elijah? Right there. She didn't have to worry about it. She didn't have to think anymore. Is it there? Where was it? Right. It was born. My prophet was born. My Elijah, Malachi 4, came on April the 6th, 1909. I don't have to worry about it. Is Malachi going to come? He's already there. Just wait for him to fulfill his ministry. And that's it. Oh, but he's dead. Shut up. Death never changes you, just your character. Samuel, etc., 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 Moses, Elijah, etc., etc. Just, just, no, just shut up. Don't be those things. God has promised, be careful. Now, see, he said, be careful. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to comment so much. But I love all this. Some of this I've been waiting for 20 years or more. Just bring it up. Be careful. God has promised Malachi 4 for this last day. And Malachi 4 has not as has not yet as been fulfilled. Oh, he was, you know, we were going to clarify, clear, fix his grammar. He says, it has not as yet been fulfilled. But it must be fulfilled for it is a Germanized word of God spoken through Malachi, the prophet. Jesus referred to it. It is to be just before the coming of Christ. The second time. Listen close now. Yeah. All scripture that has not been fulfilled must be before that time. Yeah. The Bible is to be finished. To be finished. The Gentile dispensation is to be finished with the church age. When this anointed messenger arrives, of course, he will plant the seed. I love this. Listen to this. He will, he will plant the seed of the entire Bible. Plant from... Amen. The serpent to the messenger in the former reign. Amen. He's there in the latter reign too. Yes. Former day he will be rejected by the denominational people. Uh -oh. Yes. As his <laughs> forefather John and Elijah, as All was right. spoken by our Lord. Spoken word of original seed. Now here is in closing. To those who don't believe that the last messenger to the church age is Elijah the prophet, a man anointed in that line, after death, watch, after death of this last church age. Now you notice what happened, see? After death, he's talking about the most Elijah, okay? Revelation 11. After death, their dead bodies are destroyed by wild beasts. This is talking about, let me rephrase this. Uh, I thought this was the other quote. I'm going to correct this. I'm going to correct myself. It says in Revelation 19 now. Yeah. We're going to see that. Most Elijah's bodies do lay there in the city, which is spiritually called Sodom yes. and Egypt. I'm from Jerusalem, city, which is called spiritually called out of Sodom in Egypt. I'm from Jericho, a condemned city. Yes. You know, you go into Jericho, you're backsliding. You go from Jerusalem back to Jericho, you're backsliding. That's what the prophet tells us. And that's what Jesus said. He went down to Jericho. Yes. yes. Wow. And this is when, this is Revelation. This is now when he's comparing Elijah spiritual to the Elijah literal. You know, he's Jezebel was fed to the dogs, yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Ahab was, the dogs licked his blood, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, he didn't lick him over there when he was on the battlefield. They did, yeah, when, the, when they came and brought the chari 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 chariot home, washed it out, the car washed, so to speak, the dogs came and they started licking up the blood. Exactly, fulfilling exactly what Elijah said. After death, their death bodies are destroyed by wild beasts. You know that. Mm -hmm. Now, that's true. Like theirs had the type of Jezebel for seal. Now, if you want to see their bodies, let's turn over here to Revelation. That's what Brother Ben said. You see a woman that's all painted up, you know, like a clown? 
or just paint it up. She said, hello, Miss Dog Meat. Yeah. Yes or no? Yes. That's what he said. Okay. Joseph got in trouble with that. Brother Brown got in trouble because Joseph believed. Joseph believed every word his daddy said. So he got into trouble. Mr. Brandon, he your 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 son called me a witch. Yeah. Well, Joseph, you shouldn't be talking about that. But you said that that then I'm sorry, ma'am, that I stand by what I said. <laughs> brother, 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 I think it's brother Joseph Riley. I heard him give us a little testimony. So yeah, and I heard Brother Bam say, come out of her, my people. Brother Bam, you say, come out of her. You said it's all right for, for us to stay there in the churches. And, you know, should I stay there? Brother, you just stay there. Of course you stay there. But I heard you say, come out. I said, that's different. You come out there. They really care of what you hear and how you hear it. You know, you get them a little too, what's the word, compromising, wishy-washy spirit. Forgive me for being like that many times. Didn't need more prayer. That's all we need. We need, need a wish. We need a wishbone, don't we? No. We need a backbone, not a wishbone. Maybe if I felt, maybe if that was what God was trying to show me this morning, but I was, what is, I would sound like I've had a backbone, not a wishbone. I, I love, I'd love to be there. Like I was there you this morning. I started speaking. What's wrong with me? I kept saying, what's wrong with me? Now, if you want to see their bodies, talk about Jezebel and, and Ahab now, okay? Now, if you want to see their bodies, let's turn over here to Revelation 19. After after the word slays them. Now, the word word is going to kill them. You know that. Is that, I'm not sure if it's Ephesians 1.10 or something, in different verses, and maybe Thessalonians 2, 2 Thessalonians 2, where the Lord will destroy them with the brightness of his coming. You can I'm just giving you thoughts so you can research it yourself, okay? Now the word is going to kill them. You know that, all right. Now you just watch and see what happens when Christ when Christ is coming in Revelation 19. We're beginning with the 17th verse. And I saw an angel standing Amen. in the sun. I'm going to continue that in a little bit, the fourth seal. Now watch. Now he comes forth smiting. Who is he smiting? Jezebel and her Ahab, false prophet. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, To all the fowls of the air in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together to the supper of the great God. He feeds them to the beasts and birds. Now watch over here in the other chapter here of the book of Revelation in just a minute. Kill with the sword and death and beasts of the earth. He kills them with the word. Right? So it's coming. They lay there and then he says, Come and come and dine. The wow. master called. Come and dine on these these bodies. Okay? He feeds them to the beasts and birds. Now watch over here and in, in the other chapter here of the book of Revelation in just a minute. Kill with the sword and death and beasts of the earth. See, Jeze the Jezebel church, her actual body is to be eaten by fowls and beasts of the earth. Just exactly like Ahab. Wait, 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 wait. Brother, brother, Ernie, you got a little bit wrong here. Well, the scripture has it wrong because the Bible says that Jezebel's, you know, Babylon gets burned up, right? I think it's 18, chapter 18 of Revelation says the, the ten kings get together and they burn her with fire. So you can't have uh, her body be there. She's blown up with atomic bomb. That's correct. You're right. But that's just her headquarters. Yeah. That's where the head is. Her body's being eaten up in different places. Mm. Her body's scattered all over the world. I'm then interpreting, I'm just food for thought. Okay. So we eaten by the fowls and beasts of the earth, just exactly like Ahab and Jezebel was in the natural soul, are they to be in the spiritual form, a church. Do you see what I mean? Congregation says amen. We, are, we understand that, right? All right. Next paragraph. Elijah's, oh, Elijah was the prophet in the days of Ahab and Jezebel, natural, and he is promised to do the 
Same thing according to thus saith the Lord in the word to the Jezebel spiritual, his spirit form of ministry. Well, Brother Ernie, that, 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 that's Elijah, the real Elijah. So be it. But he has part in that Gentile portion. Okay. For seal. And here we, we're finishing up now the seventh church in messenger. We'll get to the seventh step in a little bit. It is, is the seventh angel, as spoken of in Revelation 10, the same person as Elijah of Malachi 4? Did I answer that? That don't sound like I answered that. Yes, it's the same person. Revelation 10 is the seventh angel's message, which the seventh angel messenger of the seventh church age, which is Malachi 4. So that's very clear message wise. Yeah. Okay. Now, that wraps up the seventh church age messenger. Now let's start off with the seventh guard. So we're still talking about seventh. He went to the sixth dimension, met with all the, those that he thought were Branham. He says, No, they're not Branham, right? And then he's, he's the one that he's the MC. He's the one that introduces uh, the Rebecca to uh, uh, Isaac, or the Ezer, and so forth. They're just they're the ones we covered already. So we're still on him right there in that respect. Role number 13, he's the king's guard, the messenger at the seventh step of the pyramid to present us to the king. How many of you remember when we talked about the uh, armor, the full armor of God? The last two things that is mentioned there in Romans 6, I wasn't going to say this, but I'm saying it now, are the helmet of salvation. Right? And the sword. The sword. And helmet, Wilhelm, it's a protector. That's where you get William from. Wilhelm, strong helmet, protector. Protector of the head. He's the one protecting the head. He's the king's guard. Okay? And then, the bill is a sword. Okay? It's a sword. He's the king's guard, the messenger at the seventh step of the pyramid to present us to the king. Okay? Role number one, read with me if you can. In role number one of our prophet, we will see, we haven't seen that, we haven't got number one yet. Number one is going to take us four Sundays to do. The role where he's paralleling John the Baptist with, with the seventh church's messenger, Brother Ben. Read with me now. In role number one of our prophet, we will see that Brother Branham's ministry paralleled that, that of John the Baptist. John introduced Jesus, presented Jesus to the world, and our prophet will introduce us, present us to the bride, the bride to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, Brother Branham referred to himself as the second forerunner. This is my comments here, just abbreviating many things. Brother Branham referred to himself as the second forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ, as John the Baptist was the first forerunner. He said this in the section of, yes. on, Am pick I, up the I, pen and write. Yes, sir. When he preached the spoken word as the original seed. The second forerunner introduces the bride to the Lord Jesus Christ at the moment of the rapture. We talked about that already, okay? Here, here's where he says that. As the, as the end of time prophecies will repeat. Say repeat with me. Repeat. repeat something that happen again and again and again. Yeah. As the end time promises will repeat, I believe, as the first forerunner came from the wilderness and cried, Behold the Lamb of God, the second forerunner will probably do the wow. same by pointing the people to a word-born bride. The bride of Christ will be pointed to the skies at the appearing of Jesus, screaming, wow. Behold, the Lamb of God will come forth from His lips. God help us to be ready for this near event. Okay. Here's another quote. And the pyramid being those foundations up into the king's chamber, and just before you hit the seventh wall, you'd have to look at the Thompson, is it Thompson's uh, diagram of the pyramids. My dad used to talk to me about that a lot, showed me the picture of the a book he had. There's but the seventh wall, okay? No, there you go. You hit just before you hit the second seventh wall, there's a little introduction plank. There, where a messenger comes out to bring you to the king. 
the messenger John the Baptist that introduced to the king, but the headstone was rejected. And they don't know the stone of stone or whatever it is. They don't know where it's at because it's a rejected stone. But that's the stone that caps the whole thing, that makes it the pyramid through the complete seven church ages. At grace, at this, at this, there's seven ads. The last one is Christ. Add this to your charity, add grace to your grace, add something else to something else till it gets up to Christ is the headstone. And I am the door. That's when you're right, when you get up to way at the top, there's a church, you see a door open in heaven. Come up hither, tango on the fire. That, that's the highest you can go. <laughs> now, here's another quote. And then people screamed and said, we know that. We know we're going with you someday back to earth said Jesus will come and you'll be judged according to the word that you preached us and then if you're accepted at that time which you will be and said then you will present us to him as your trophies of your ministry said you will guide us to him and all together we'll back we'll go back to the earth to live forever and it's talking about so many things I see the millennium there I see the rapture yes, there the continuation going up to the Supper of the Lord, then you come down to the earth, and then you go back up again, and then the, the war of Armageddon, and then you come back to earth again. It's just so many, yes, sir. and then, and then, and then, and then, and right there, just to the, reject the king. Now, here's another one. Now, if that was true, then on that day he said, Then the people said to me, Jesus will come to you, and you will present us to him. A chaste virgin. Isn't that beautiful. And you'll present us to the Lord Jesus when he comes as trophies of your ministry. Yes, sir. Adoption number four. Israel had, and this is something that I summarized, okay? And you'll see it in a little bit. Israel has seven church ages. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. And the first forerunner introduced Jesus to the world. He was the seventh church age messenger. Isn't that beautiful? Do we have seven, seven ages? Our seventh is Elijah. Israel has seven church ages. The last one is the seventh is Elijah. Elijah also, John the Baptist. Israel has seven church ages, and the first forerunner introduced Jesus to the world. He was the seventh church age messenger, Elijah. The second forerunner, the seventh messenger, also Elijah, introduces the bride to the Lord Jesus Christ at the moment of the rapture. The seven streaks represented the seven church ages. Israel natural and the gent and the Gentile church is spiritual seven church ages just exactly the same way and Israel had seven church ages right in its bloom of its best come Ahab and married his idolatry this idolatry and brought an idolater in and caused idolatry in Israel you see how there's there's the in the middle there's an there's an Elijah there and the, over here uh, you want to know what I think happened there? God really confused the harlot there. Jezebel, because it's during the time that she called herself a prophetess. God sends her prophetess. God sends a prophetess, prophetess to her. Raise the dead. Heal the sick. Saw visions. Amen. Just like a man. Wow. But she wow. was a woman. Amen. Through, a, through the curve. Uh, it, Joan of Arc. So, I love that. I want to sit down with her for a thousand years. Just talk to her. How did you do this? How go from a farm? You know, That's right. medium poor woman, girl, medium. How did you learn how to ride a horse or so? The Lord help. <laughs> Ahab, it was Ahab brought in Mary's an idolater. She brings an idolatry into Israel. It's a sexual sin. It's all sexuality. Is there peace? One of her sons asked Ahud, Jehu, Jehu, is, is it peace? How can there be peace as long as your your mom is is with bringing witchcraft into Israel and spreading all her whoredoms all over the place? It's like that. Boom. They turn quick. They turn from God to sexuality very, very quickly. That's right there. That's the first sin. 
Let's just read. Oh, friend, I want you to see that so bad. A public testimony, seven stripes representing the seven church ages, which by Israel the seven churches were in the last, the loudest said, and to every church age he was a lamb slain from the foundation of the Amen. world. To every church age. Oh, there's no more mercy right now. Just shut up and keep reading. Okay. He was a lamb slain from the foundation of the world, the waters Amen. of separation. That's what he's talking about, the the seven, you know, they get the waters of separation, they made the ashes from said cedar and this and that, they put it all together and then they, they yes. sprinkled the water of separation. Yes. Okay. Now, here's, a, here's another quote. Now, notice also the, the days of Elijah. When they had rejected Elijah as a prophet, that little thread, that ancient church age, one of these days, I'll bring up and show you that Israel had seven church ages too. And tied exactly with these and in their church age. In the days of Elijah, they refused him. And there's three years and six months, there was no rain. And the ancient prophet said that the skies looked like brass. Divine judgment upon the nations for rejecting God and listening to Jezebel. Seven churches in the seven church ages. Had this vision. The second forerunner introduces the person approaching the king's chamber to the king at the seventh step. One of the roles of our prophet. Now, if you'd like to read with me, it's going to get commented because if we comment, we're going to be here a long, 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 really long time. We've only been here um, 22, 38. Minutes so far, we're just a little bit after 11. I'd like to be done by 11.15 at the most. And the great pyramid that Enoch built, the last chamber is gone through, ready for the king's chamber now, the coming of the Lord, right in the top for the keystone. All the calendar of astronomy points right straight. The stars are declaring it as they did at the first time. When the wise men looked up and saw the star, they said, There, the great king is coming. Now the stars are pointing again. If you go into the pyramid, I've read this from different sources, there's a little tunnel, there's a little, like a little tunnel, like a little, just a thing that just goes from the king's chamber, I think it's the king's chamber, goes all straight out like this, and at a certain time of the year, if you look just right there, just, you see the north star. Amen. Polaris. I think that's what they call it. This being this way would answer exactly Enoch's sign in, the, in Egypt, the pyramid, would it? Enoch, before the end to the living destruction, when justification was coming in, he brought forth a sign, and in this pyramid is seven steps going to the king's chamber. Watch on the seventh step. If you ever study the dimensions of the pyramid, what comes out to take the oncomer to introduce to the king? Watch whose station that is standing there, and you'll see the day you're living in the pyramid. This may be the last quote, so thank the Lord if it is. And the pyramid, being those foundations, of, we've read this before already, but I put this there at the end again. And the pyramid being those foundations up into the king's chamber. And just before you hit the seventh wall, there's a little introduction plank. There where a messenger comes out to bring you to the king. The messenger, John the Baptist, that introduced to the king. But the head stone was rejected. And they don't know the stone or stone or whatever it is. They don't know where it's at because it's a rejected stone. See? So he's a seven church age messenger paralleling Elijah up the stone at the, at the, uh, let, let's let me review a little bit so you, you want to study this. I, I think all this, what I'm going to say right now is in the, not in the message of grace. I don't recall right now. But as where Brother Man talks about the 
Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and, uh, Abraham, yes. Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph be the foundation, foundation right? Amen. And then you have, that's the foundation. Then you have the body, the prophet tells us what's the prophets. Then the head is John the uh, uh, Jesus, but he's, there's somebody to introduce him. And that's the seventh one, the seventh church age messenger that introduces the head to the um, to the people, okay? Yeah, I said it right. John the Baptist introduces Jesus to the people. Now, this this was the this is what Brother Bernie brought us brought us some teachings on that when he talked about cambio de dispensación or the change of dispensation. This was a battle between Peter and Paul. Okay? You have to understand this why there was a battle between them. Because they had different dispensation. Peter was an Israelite, and he saw Jesus as a head. He's the capstone. Yes. And Paul said, "Just a moment. It's getting gooder and gooder." But the cap, the pyramid started off as a physical pyramid. God made it into a spiritual pyramid for the seven church ages. He's talking to them. He's talking to them theologically with Peter, so you can understand. Remember the seven church ages, and, 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 and the pyramid, yeah, and then now you have Jesus Christ up here. But I see Jesus Christ, I'm just taking him now, putting him down here in the corner, the platform. Wait a minute, you, yes, it's getting gooder. Peter, it's going to get gooder and gooder and gooder. You can't imagine what's coming. <laughs> it's a lot. Amen. Getting gooder and gooder. And then he starts building it up and building it up and building it up and then, then you get to the great one and that's what Brother Bradley was, well, I want to get to that so badly, that great one. Maybe the time and maybe the hour for that person to rise on the scene. If it is, I will be leaving you. There won't be two of us here at the same time. In other words, I'm going to be evangelist and then prophet, evangelist and then prophet going back and forth. I'm just going to be just one. I want to get to those quotes so badly, it's going to be able to help a lot of people, I believe. Let's stand. For who hath despised the day of small things, for they shall rejoice and see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel, with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro the whole earth. And that's our two, the two roles that we covered of Brother Bam. When you get a chance to study that, Seven Church Age Messenger. That's Malachi 4, Revelations 10, through 1730. There's, there's so many more. Revelation 19, this, this seven, yeah. seven Church Age Messenger, and the seventh step, step uh, the pyramid. Let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. Yeah. You have allowed us to look at our messenger Lord. Lord Lord help our humanity Lord how carnal we are Lord we walk into a room and just look at people and without even knowing them we say I don't like that guy <laughs> we just kind of rub each other in the wrong way just we're so carnal Lord help us to be more like you yes. help us to be forgiving loving and truly love each other. I, I'm bringing these things, Lord, because I love the people. I want to see what, what you have for them. For them to be able, first of all, they, they won't be able to appreciate what is coming from Brother Branham until they know who he is. So that's what I'm trying to get to them. Who is William Branham? So they can appreciate what he said. So that even if it's in his mistakes, quote unquote mistakes, you're still speaking through them, Lord. Amen. Through those things that he said. Help each one to hear, Lord. We offer ourselves up as a little group here, Lord, for next year. Though it get look worse, may we realize that it's getting better, getting gooder and gooder. And then Lord Jesus Christ we pray.
Let's give the, the Lord a clap offering. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Okay. You may be seated. <clears throat> How many enjoyed the word? Amen. Yes, <clears throat> it's it. it, it Makes you want to go home and start to <laughs> start studying, right? I think I ran out of paper, so I had to flip some papers. <laughs> Amen. Let us worship. I am the God that healeth thee. Amen. Bye. 
bless you, each and every one of you. May the Lord answer your needs. Amen. Amen. Supply all your needs. Um, let us continue to shine our light and brighten up the corner where you're at. If the devil comes and puts you in the corner, gets you in the corner, just shine that light. He'll flee from that light. Amen. Amen. That light, in, in light, darkness flees. <laughs> Uh, let us bow our heads and, and, and let's, uh, let's oh, pray. Yes. yes. Happy New Year to all the people. Okay. And, uh, uh, Merry oh. Christmas and a Happy New Year. Yes, sir. Once again. <laughs> all right. Tell you, have a Happy New Year. Man. All right. Don't be crazy on the road. Yeah, stay <laughs> home. So, can we see that song right in the corner? You started it. <laughs> in Spanish? You're going to have to help me. English is fine, right in the corner in Spanish, whatever. I don't know where that's at, so let's find it. Remember that one? Oh. 
Thank you, Sister Lupita. I, I, I was like, where is it? <laughs> he wants to pull me into Spanish, but then I finally looked up, it's there. Uh, amen. Praise the Lord. Let's bow our heads. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and mercy. We thank you for the good time, Lord Jesus, that we're having right now. Who cares, Lord? We're having an awesome, beautiful time, Lord. We thank you for your worship, Lord. We thank you for what you've done, Lord. Receive our worship, Lord. We thank you for making a, a joyful noise, Lord Jesus, for allowing us, Lord. Amen. We love you, Lord. Take us home safely, Lord. Dismiss us from this place, but never from thy presence. Amen. And Lord, I, I ask for forgiveness if my Spanish offended anybody. <laughs> In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Can we sing that once again? Brian up the corner. It's in Spanish. Real in the city,